All right. Welcome, everybody. Hey, gang. Welcome to another edition of Webinar Wednesdays by Brilliant Directories, where we try to provide you with tips to grow your online community. Always great to be with you guys here today. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. I'm Jason there on the left, and we're lucky to be joined by Rick and Patrick here today. Rick is one of the support specialists here at Brilliant Directories. You may have interacted with him through email or a phone call. And also Patrick is a digital marketing expert. Um, there's no one else I know that has helped uh, Brilliant Directories customers grow their sites uh, more than Patrick. So Rick and Patrick, welcome to the webinar. Thank you, Jason. Always a pleasure to be here and particularly looking forward to today's webinar. Great topic today. Thank you, Jason. Happy to be here too. Awesome. Thank you so much, guys. And I always like to mention, if you're not already part of our Facebook group, head on over to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook. It's a great place to carry on the conversations after webinar Wednesdays. There's fantastic participation there. I believe we broke 1,500 members in that Facebook group this week. So round of applause, uh, that's great. And it's great to see everyone helping each other in that Facebook group. I'm already, uh, I'm also a member in there and participating. So if we don't get to your questions here today, or if you have questions after the webinar, just go to brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook, join the group, and we look forward to seeing you in there. And for those first timers joining in on Webinar Wednesday, it really is a great platform to sharpen your marketing skills and help you grow your online community. Some topics that we cover are how to convert website visitors into free or paid members, how to increase your website traffic, and that's actually part of the tip of the week that we're gonna cover today. Um, it has a lot to do with search engine optimization. What's also fun is identifying revenue opportunities for your specific industry. And one of my favorite topics to cover is improving your website's navigation. I think that has a lot to do with your website success is being clear and easy to understand for the visitor. So if you have questions on any of these topics, uh, please save them. We're going to get to them in just a little bit later on in the webinar. And as a reminder to everyone there, you guys have a huge support team behind you, the entire BD community. We have an amazing support team here at Brilliant Directories. Um, if you have questions uh, for the support team, such as reporting any known issues or you need help troubleshooting uh, things, those are good. Uh, those are good things to contact the support team for. And on Webinar Wednesdays, we get stick uh, with marketing and strategy topics. And we've decided a few webinars ago to keep this slide in there. Pat, I usually cover this slide, but why don't you um, review the hamster wheel and kind of why we want to leave this on as a reminder here moving forward in all the webinar Wednesdays. Absolutely, Jason. So, so basically to, to simplify the concept is to make sure that you're always moving forward. You're always going to a next step. And the easiest, the easiest way to explain this is you always want to start off and identify a problem that you're solving either for a website visitor or for one of your members. And then what you want to do is you want to build the content around it. So we have email templates. You might have uh, a lead magnet. You might have some blog articles that support it. So you try to think what is all the content pieces I need to build around this so that I have a complete experience supporting the problem, the, the, the solution to the problem I'm solving. Then what you want to do is you want to disperse it throughout the website uh, and anyone want to drive traffic to it, get people using the content. And once that's done, you basically want to start back at step one and, and, and follow that same formula. So the reason we see you're getting off the hamster wheel is because you're not doing only one t thing. And oftentimes people get stuck in that third step. They're really designing and tweaking a site, but they're not really progressing and moving on to new activity that will lead to member signups. That's right. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day. You don't have to worry about creating the perfect website design uh, in one go. You can do sections mm -hmm. and parts of your website and, and just always have, like you said, uh, forward progress and motion on your entire project, not just one piece of your project. We're going to dive into one of my favorite segments here on Webinar Wednesday, Rick's Corner, where, where Rick will provide simple solutions for common questions. And I really like this topic, Rick, because actually it is very simple, but it has a, a lot of impact on a website. So let's review the configuration tab in the general settings. And we have some new options there, don't we? 
We do, we do indeed. Uh, there's, like you just said, there's a lot of functionality, very easy to manipulate and to change and to update. Um, so I'm happy to go over this particular tab, Jason. Awesome. Let me transfer the uh, the screen to you so you can uh, show us what you, you got, Rick. Perfect. So what we have here is the main dashboard. This is going to be the web page where you land when you log into the Brilliant Directories backend. Um, again, what we're going to cover today is very basic, but super useful. And there's, like Jason said, new things uh, to take care of. So let's go ahead and jump in here. We're going to open up the settings. We're going to go to the general settings section. And today what we're going to focus on is the configurations tab. All right. So I'm just going to navigate here real quick to the configurations tab, open that up. And let's go ahead and go over the, the options that we have here. So to the, to the top left, what we have is the website status, a few options for you to choose from. Uh, when you're working on your website, you don't want to display the website as uh, because you're working on it, you're, you're tweaking stuff around. You might want to set that up as the staging mode. Uh, once you're ready with all the updates completed and you feel confident to bring people into the website, then you can just switch it to the live mode. All right, so we have those two options right here. Um, to the right, what we have is the uh, field where you were going to add the Google Analytics ID. So uh, a common mistake that we see here is that people paste the uh, the analytics, the entire code, the script that Google's pro Google provides onto this tab, and that's not exactly what this is intended for. So what we need you to add right here is going to be the analytics account ID. So it's something similar to this uh, information that you see here, the like QA, and then it has a number afterwards. All right, scrolling down, what we have is the uh, website time zone. So here you can go ahead and choose whichever time zone fits your needs. Um, bear in mind that this plays a role within like the uh, the date and time when your when your articles are published. So keep that in mind. It would also apply to all all features that use the time zone. So keep that in mind when you're setting up those articles. Um, then to the right we have of course the date format. So the uh, we have the regular month, day, year. You can go ahead and choose the day, month year if you prefer. Right underneath what we have would be the primary country. Uh, so if we open that, uh, that particular dropdown, we have the list of, of options available for you here. Um, when you choose the, the country that you're going to be focusing on, you can go ahead and choose to the right uh, the location search suggestions. So if we open that up, it's gonna allow you to include all countries, which is gonna be set by default or only search, search the primary country, which is gonna be the one that you set up on this side. All right, um, any questions till now, Jason? Am I moving too fast? No, no, it's it's all good stuff. Um, I was wondering if we could just okay. take one step back and if you can switch the site to staging mode so we can really understand what live mode means and staging mode. Of course, let me go ahead and visit the website with the live mode as it is right now. So this is how like the regular website is gonna show up, regular BD site. Uh, like Jason stated, when we switch this to the staging mode and we of course save the changes, um, what we're gonna have is a form that allows the visitor of your website to be, well, basically join a mailing list. So I'm gonna save that here. Let me go back to the website. Let's go ahead and refresh this. Okay, so this is basically what the form looks like. It's just a very straightforward form that allows the visitor, again, to ba basically register to a mailing list. So you can then use that for your own marketing needs. So, what, yeah, just want to make a note here. So what's key here is your main website's domain there will show this page. And I've seen people slightly modify this, this page in the mes messaging. So you can kind of pre – it's pre-registration. So you can advertise your site. So once you're – design is quote unquote ready, uh, you can email the people on this list and say, hey, come join our site now. Now, you can still work on your site in the meantime. Um, for example, you can go to your home page if you go forward slash home, and this will allow you to work on your home page and all your internal pages. Uh, but to the rest of the public, when they come to your, your main domain name, your main homepage, they're going to get that pre-registration page. I don't recommend staying on the pre-registration page too long. Um, try to get a, a, a minimal uh, proof of concept online so you can actually start getting real members to, to join your site. But if you're doing major construction on your site, 
um, you may want to utilize this staging mode. 100% correct, Jason. Um, you want to get the ball rolling, get people's feedback. So the, the the less amount of time that you can stick on the staging mode, the better. Right. Uh, great, great information there. Let's jump to the next that we have on the list here, because this one are, do come up quite often, to be honest. So we have the distance format. Here you can choose miles or kilometers, whichever fits your needs. And then this one to the right of it, which is super, super useful. It's basically going to, going to set the default search radius. This plays a role uh, when searching for members, when searching for posts. It plays a role in the entire search functionality of the website. So if for some reason uh, you're completing searches on your site, either you're testing this out or, um, or you're sending someone to test it for you and you're not finding the information that you are searching for, this would be the first setting that would, I would always recommend on, on checking. Make sure that the default search radius is enough to cover all the expected area that you're um, that you're trying to search for. So super important, this one default search radius comes up quite often. And, and just just a just, right. just a note about that one. Um, huh? It's related to when you're doing a location search, basically for members, and it's going to really depend on what the the location of your website is, that that you're servicing. You could be a nationwide site or an international site. But if you're a, a, a small city, it will really depend on the, the city or county that you're covering. So, for example, Los Angeles is a fairly large city, but 20 miles in Los Angeles is, is very far. If I'm looking for a business, I definitely don't want to drive 20 miles, and that would almost be an irrelevant search uh, for me. So I'd want to set the default radius to maybe 5 on my site for Los Angeles. But if you're in a more rural area uh, where driving longer distances makes sense or you want to include uh, more members uh, from, from areas that are farther away from the search that the website visitor did, you might want to open up the default search radius to a larger number that makes a little bit more sense for those for your website. Exactly correct. And the key point there is location, location. So it really depends on what you're targeting, the area that you're focusing on, super important. All right, uh, moving down the list, what we have is the website currency. So here you can go ahead and choose the uh, the currency that you, again, that you're targeting, the, tar the currency that's gonna be used across the website. Um, the, uh, the important part is that this is what's going to charge the member on this particular currency, all right? So that's very, very important. Um, the, uh, the next setting that we have is the Google Maps language. You can go ahead and choose from the list whatever fits your particular audience, right? So it's super useful and it's super nice because it does give um, the, uh, the idea that the, the map is tailored towards more towards your audience um, than if you have like a random language for your map, so super important. Um, and then what we have here is the require user consent to store data. This was released recently by BD as, a, as an update required. Um, it's called the GDPR. Uh, so this is just a way in which you can add disclaimers to the website, in which you can include information and basically just checks that the user of the website needs to check mark in order to complete the signing up of you um, or onto your website. So the reason why this is important is because you can add, again, as, as many like, up to five disclaimers, if I'm not mistaken, uh, basically are like ways in which you can tell the user of the website how the information that they're going to share with you is stored and used and all that good stuff. So super important. And it's just a matter of switching this to yes or no um, in order to get those check marks to show on your forms, sign up forms, to be more precise. That's right. So yeah, the GDPR is if your website is international or you're definitely servicing European uh, customers and website visitors, you're going to want to make sure to enable that uh, to make sure your uh, website is compliant uh, with the EU laws. Um, and that's an automatic thing that you just set to yes or no. Correct. And uh, yeah, it's super super easy to use. You set it to yes or no, and then the information can be added as text labels. That in itself can be another topic of discussion. I'll be happy to go in depth later on in a different date. Um, but yeah, basically you can turn it on and off right here. Super easy. Fantastic. Let's see, does anyone have any questions uh, about the configurations tab or any of these settings in the general settings area? Uh, let's see, Vincent has his hand up. Hey, Vincent, how you doing today? Okay, so what do you think, uh, could you just go over to the disclaimers again? What sure. you said, he mentioned five different disclaimers. Uh, sure, um, so why don't we do this, Rick, why don't you turn on the GDPR 
and let's go to one of the sign up pages. So let's first see what these disclaimers look like. Sure thing. Awesome. And I think we can go to any of the sign up pages, the free sign up or, or paid sign up pages. Right. Let me go to uh, uh, check out uh, one number one. Yeah. So if we if we scroll down once this page loads by setting that to yes, should be at the bottom there. So now we have these check boxes with with disclaimers and. What those are is you can actually customize these bins and you can actually have more. If we go to the text labels in the admin um, area, you can search for GDPR, Rick. Yes, sir. Just a second. So those, those messages there, each one of those checkboxes is actually just a sentence or two that's uh, basically a text label. So we could look at uh, GDPR. So we have member consent one and two, but you see three is empty, Vince, and four is empty, and five is empty. If you oh, feel, okay, I if, got you. If you put in more disclaimers, like we're going to save your email or you know whatever whatever your website's going to do with data, you can have multiple disclaimers. You can you can rewrite what these what the default ones are, but if you write more, it's going to add a, a few more check boxes that the person. Had. Uh, needs to to tick off so you can have as as many as zero to five um, probably you don't need five that's, that's a little overkill but in case you need it it's there for you what do you, what do you recommend um, I think one I think one or two is fine um, it, it just depends on who your audience is um, I think the default ones the two default ones pretty much cover all your bases um, if you're if you're doing you know, more elaborate things with data, like you're sharing it with third party or, or you're selling people's data or you're going to use it for marketing, uh, you know, you might want to just add more. Uh, sometimes one checkbox can include two topics, not just one. So uh, it just depends how, how streamlined you want the, the sign up process to be. You don't want to put too many hurdles in there. Uh, but again, it depends on your industry. If it's a loan document or something a little more sensitive that's legal or insurance, Perhaps you want to put more check boxes there because what this form actually does is it does store the, which items they checked plus the user's IP address. Uh, so that's your, if anything happens to you, the website owner, that's going to be kind of like your proof that the person signed off on these things. Um, but again, I don't want to, I don't want to scare anyone or overcomplicate it. It's just a compliance um, for, for the, for EU citizens uh, and websites servicing EU citizens need to have uh, some kind of message on, uh, any place where somebody's putting their email address that you're going to store their email address and that you may use their email address for marketing purposes if you're going to. Well, and what do you think about a generic American one where it says uh, you give us permission to contact you by email or text? Or Yeah, that, that's fine. I mean, you, it doesn't just have to be for EU. I think it's good practice to let people know that you are storing their, their information. I would keep it um, as simple as possible. You, again, you don't want to scare people away. Um, so just and people are used, are used to maybe one or two check boxes, um, but it just depends how much how sensitive the industry is you're serving and the expectations of, of the website visitor. OK, OK, great. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Vince. Good questions there. Thank you. All right. Good questions about uh, GDPR there. It was it was a hot topic, GDPR, mm -hmm. a few months ago. You might have everyone's privacy policy changed. That's that's when you. Any, anywhere you ever submitted your email address to, you got an email saying that they've updated their privacy policy. Uh, it was because of uh, this. Um, all right, Rick, is there any anything else you want to cover with this, Pat? Do you have any uh, final words about the configuration tab here? Well, that was very helpful. All right, great. Right, yeah, and that's going to be basically it on my end. Uh, if you guys have any questions, as Jason stated at the beginning, the support staff is always super happy to help. So please just let us know. Awesome. Thanks so Rick. Thank you so much, Rick, on that presentation there. Super, super welcome. All right. Those of you who are on the webinar today, I think are in for a treat. Um, our tip of the week, I think, is super high value. All right. The tip of the week, I think, can apply to any website. It doesn't even have to be your Brilliant Directories uh, membership website. It's how to optimize your homepage SEO for Google. And this is, I think, one of the key items when people share their sites in the webinars or I'm helping people on phone calls. 
uh, where people are sharing their sites in, in the Facebook group, I see it's the number one overlooked thing. You know, you, you might add your logo and, and think that uh, your job stops there, but if you don't optimize at least your homepage SEO for Google, over time, it's going to be very difficult to attract uh, new visitors to your website. And really, you're going to become reliant on paid uh, Google or Facebook ads to drive traffic to your website. So this is a really important topic. It's really easy to solve this problem of, of optimizing your homepage uh, SEO. And we're going to cover it in today's tip of the week. So let's take a few steps back. What does optimizing for Google mean? For those of you that are experts out there, this is uh, pretty common sense or remedial information. But for those of you who are first timers, it's important to understand some of the fundamentals. Optimizing your site for Google means that you're going to include keywords and phrases and content on your website that informs Google about the industry and audience you are serving. If you don't have keywords and phrases about the industry and audience you're serving, Google will not know what your website is about. So it's important to include keywords and phrases um, everywhere that uh, makes sense. And also, what does SEO stand for? It stands for Search Engine Optimization. Google is a search engine, and we want to optimize our website so we get the best visibility and placement in Google's search engines in our ranking position in Google for specific keywords and phrases. And some notes about SEO and Google. A lot of times when people have a website idea and they're looking for a solution, uh, they say, will you get me on, on page one of Google? And it can happen, but there are some factors that affect your ability and your ranking position in Google. So first we need to understand that SEO is a marketing strategy. It's a strategy where we are going to rely on searches in Google to show our website as a result and then the traffic from the Google search results comes to our website. So SEO is a marketing strategy. Other marketing strategies include social media marketing, paid ads to bring traffic to your website. And so SEO is very specific to getting Google search traffic to your website. And that takes us to point number two, SEO drives Google traffic to your website. So how does Google know what your website is about? Well, you need to have keywords and phrases throughout your entire website so Google knows what keyword searches to show your website for on in their search results. If you don't have keywords and phrases on your website, Google will not know, um, you know, to, to show your site as an option for to potential visitors. Another thing is SEO doesn't happen overnight. It's probably one of the slowest marketing strategies. If you have a new site that you launched today, there have been competitors online for those keywords for years. So it's not that it's going to be impossible to rank your website in Google and get it to show up in search results, but it will take some time, especially when you're trying to target very competitive keywords. For example, if you want to rank for the word single word lawyer, you're going to have to do a lot of heavy lifting to get your site up there in the search results. And we need to understand that many factors affect SEO. How many competitors out there? How hard are those competitors working? The age of your site, yes. The age, how long your domain is online does affect your Google rankings. So again, a lot of people who are waiting to officially launch their website, I would recommend getting it online as quickly as possible because there is something called the Google Sandbox and it sometimes can take four to six months before Google gives your site the credibility uh, and authority to even show up in Google search results because Google doesn't necessarily trust every new site that comes online. So that's why there's a, a time and waiting period for some new sites. So get your site online as quickly as possible, even if it's not perfect, just for the simple fact of getting it ranked in Google and indexed in Google a lot quicker. Um, other factors that affect your SEO are the, the keyword relevancy and uh, that's on your website, 
uh, how many backlinks you have to your website, how many other websites are pointing and linking to your website. Um, SEO is, is like an onion. You can continue to peel back layers and there's a lot of complex um, mechanisms that affect your SEO rankings. But the important thing is to start early and to have a strategy to help your rankings over time. But what we're going to cover in this tip of the week is are just some basic, simple, essential um, uh, tips that you can utilize to strengthen your website's homepage SEO. And it might be pretty obvious, but Pat, can you share some of the benefits of optimizing a website's SEO? Absolutely. So for me, what I like most about it is it's going to start increasing your organic traffic. And organic traffic means when I'm Googling for something, the sites that I see Google recommend, those are the sites that I'm going to visit. So what you want is you want Google to be able to find your site so that visitors that are searching for specific services or specific content are being recommended to visit your website. So that's how number one and two obviously uh, go hand in hand. Uh, the better your SEO is, the higher you'll be in the search result rankings. And, and like Jason said earlier, there are a lot of factors. It's not just a matter of making sure the keywords are there, the bounce rates, making sure you're actually delivering on what you're promising. Meaning if I search keywords and I find your site, um, do I stay on your site? Do I, do I visit other pages, so on and so forth? Uh, but what I like about today's webinar, it's really where you should begin. And, and like Jason says, since it takes a long time to see the results, the sooner you get started, the better it's going to be for your online business. So it should be one of the first things that you tackle when you launch an online directory, in my opinion, as well. Um, and if you get it all set up, the sooner you get it done, the, the sooner your site's going to grow. And uh, probably the best thing about organic, Jason, as you and I know, when you succeed at organic, meaning that people are visiting your website based on keywords that they're searching for, you don't pay for that traffic. So that's something that you you can pay for pay-per-click. You can pay for Facebook in order to get that traffic. But with organic, that's going to be free website visitors. And often that organic traffic really converts well. So you got you to put in the effort ahead of time but later on comes the payoff where you start getting that free traffic to your site absolutely and we just wanted to keep this slide in here it's basically the opposite of the slide we just looked at what happens if you don't optimize uh, your website's SEO basically it's going to be really hard for Google to find your site or actually identify what keywords uh, you hope your website will be found for in Google search results. Uh, therefore visitors will not find your site uh, your community is going to have slower growth because uh, just you're not attracting the maximum amount of people to your site that you potentially could. Um, and then another thing is visitors will find your competitors um, and you're going to have less market share. And once your competitor, your competitors have your, your potential customers, it's going to be really hard to get them back. Um, and lastly, uh, as Pat mentioned, driving traffic becomes expensive because if you're not getting the organic search traffic from Google, the only way to get traffic uh, would be from, uh, well, you could do social media if you're really good at and killing it on social media. That could be a free method. But other than that, you're probably going to have to pay for ads uh, to drive traffic to your website. So the first thing we need to do is identify what keywords and phrases we want to be found for. Um, and there are some tips and strategies for finding a diverse amount, uh, diverse keywords and phrases to uh, strengthen the SEO power of your website. And I think, uh, Pat, we wanted to use a site as an example, right? We wanted to use what was what was it? New York City dog groomers as an Correct. example. All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna tick forward to one slide. I just want to see what we have in store here. Okay. We want to show you guys some strategies to identify keywords that you should include on your site. And then what we're going to do in the next slide is we're actually going to apply these strategies to a sample website. And we're, we're going to decorate uh, a fresh site, a BD site launch with these keywords to show you guys some strategies on how you can implement these on your site. And let's, let's use that as uh, an example. So New York City dog groomer is what our directory is going to be about. Uh, so what I like to do is, is first search Google for ideas. And before I do that, let me open a notepad here. 
So New York City dog groomer. So let's do a Google search for this. And here's the first thing we can do for keyword research or to find keyword diversity. Do a search for the first thing that comes in your mind about the industry or the audience that you're going to be serving or what your directory or membership community is going to be about. So first thing that comes to my mind is we're going to be a New York City uh, dog groomer uh, directory. So you can look at the results. Um, you can see what competitors have, best dog groomers in Manhattan, best dog. So best is a good word, right? right there. So we just found a new word, best. And what I like is if you scroll down for basically most Google searches, you get a cluster right here where it says search related to New York City dog groomer. And these are the next best phrases that Google is associating with your original search. So what I like to do, you might not need all of them, but this will give you some ideas of what you can include on your homepage. Um, as buzzwords or phrases uh, to strengthen your homepage SEO because they are um, related, they they're near the search term that uh, that you that you look for in Google. So this is the first thing you can do uh, to and search Jason, Google right, for ideas. Right, right, there, right there, I found that very interesting myself because if you had hired me to come up with some SEO, I would have put the words New York in there, and that's why it's really important you don't make SEO strategies based on personal assumptions. Uh, clearly, I'm not from the New York area. And if you're from New York and you're looking for a groomer, you're probably typing in NYC. So NYC, looking at what Google recommends you use, more people search for NYC than New York. So if I put New York as a keyword that I'm that I'm targeting, I'm going to get less traffic than if I probably use NYC. So it was a, a, quite a revelation to me. And just by doing that one simple thing that you showed, Jason, uh, would make a big difference in the approach I take and probably have very good results uh, because I just took two seconds to see what Google recommends I, I search for. Absolutely. Um, so it, what it does is it expands your initial idea and provides you with some, some out-of-the-box ideas. And if you wanted to take it further, why not just click this? I think I could just click on this. And now I'm doing a search for dog grooming NYC prices. And if I scroll down, I kind of get a little more uh, variation here. So I can, I can kind of create a list of phrases. And I probably don't want all the phrases, so I can get rid of cat grooming. Um, camp canine, I can get rid of. Pet grooming is too literal. I'm just trying to get some ideas to include. So obviously prices are very important. I didn't even think about prices when I was going to start this directory. So maybe I should focus the directory about finding the best prices um, for dog for dog grooming in NYC. Um, so are you saying that perhaps there's a problem in the sense that users have to Google to find prices? There's no easy way to compare and you have to visit all the individual websites and perhaps that's one of the problems that you're going to solve for your community so you can build content around that? Absolutely. So I just, basically, I just got an idea of a problem. If, if Google is suggesting these, it means a lot of people are, are searching these, which means people, a lot of people have this problem. So if I created a directory that solves these problems, um, I have a higher chance of having a successful directory because I'm actually solving a real problem for people. Um, so look at, look at everything related to price, dog grooming, price list, prices. Um, so it looks like for mobile dog grooming and the prices and also finding the best dog grooming. So price might not be an issue. You can pay whatever, you, you might be looking for expensive dog grooming. Uh, but these are just some buzzwords that we might want to include in the homepage. Mm. All right. Um, another thing is you want to be more specific. So I don't want to rank for the word dog grooming. Um, I could, it, it might take a long time, but it's such a broad keyword that it's gonna take a long time. There's probably a ton of competitors that are ranking for dog grooming. So if I can add, um, if I can make it a little bit more specific, I'm gonna make my job and my potential success uh, a lot easier. So in this case, we're doing um, NYC dog grooming. So New York City is the, is the specific that we're using. If you're doing a lawyer directory, maybe you're doing a specific type of lawyer. Maybe it's immigration lawyers. Maybe it's immigration lawyers in Austin, Texas. So the more specific you get, you're going to have 
a higher probability over time of succeeding and getting closer to that number one position uh, in Google. Again, if you wanted to rank for the word lawyer, it's probably going to be very expensive and take a lot of time. So we just wanted to give the strategy here of trying to be more specific when you're doing uh, the keyword research that you're going to apply to your website. And to help you with that, there are tools out there, keyword analyzer tools. Um, I don't want to get into all of them, but they'll basically tell you uh, two pieces of information that are very important. Uh, you can type in with any one of these analyzer tools, you can type in a keyword or a phrase, and it's going to show you how much potential ser monthly search volume there is. So how many people are actually searching that phrase and then how much competition there is, meaning um, how many people are paying for ads against that keyword or phrase. Uh, so what you want to look for in an ideal situation is a search term that has a lot of volume. So a lot of people are searching that phrase or term every month and low competition, meaning um, not too many other websites are trying to pay for ads for that or really competing for uh, ranking position in Google for uh, those keywords and phrases. Uh, Pat, um, you use another one here. It's it's the Google AdWords. What is it called? It's by Google AdWords. Yeah, it's the Keyword Planner. Keyword Planner. I'm just going to do a Google search for um, Keyword Analyzer. And all of these solutions are good. I don't recommend, you don't really need to pay for one. There's a lot of free tools out there. Um, Keyword Magic. Um, some of these websites will give you like, 10 free searches and you can analyze a keyword. Uh, but basically it's to let you know if, if you're choosing a good keyword. If, you, if your keyword has really low search volume, uh, even if you rank number one for it, you're, it's not gonna drive a lot of traffic because the, the search volume is pretty low for that. But again, these are just tools to guide you through the process of, uh, uh, of finding the right keywords and phrases for your site. And since we're not going in depth in any of those tools, I think I just want to give one tip. I, one of the things I like the most, and all the, these tools do this, is what you do is you, you identify your two or three top competitors, and you use these tools with your competitors' domains. So you don't you, you can use these tools with any website in the world. And these keyword analyzers will tell you what these websites are ranking for, what they're targeting. And that'll give you some amazing insight into perhaps some keywords you should also be targeting and give you some inspiration And when you're making those big decisions in terms of what you want your strategy to be. Absolutely. Um, let's, let's, see, um, let's see if anyone here in the audience today uses a keyword tool. I'm going to lower everyone's hand here. If you've, done, if you've done any type of keyword research for your site, we'd love to hear about it. If you're using a keyword analyzer tool, um, let's see if anyone has their hands raised here. Hey, Vince. Hey, um, I, I think this is a great, great program because this to me is like the name of the game. You've got to study your competitors. Um, I actually go in and I look at this, the top websites in the search. Uh, like Google is kind of putting them in order for you. So if you, if you are searching, and like you did and you found the top 10 under the keyword you want, Google has already told you, I like this one best, I like this one second best, I like this one third best. So a lot of times you can go in and look at their site and kind of uh, look behind the scenes. I, I think this is the most valuable part because once Google's happy, it's the, the site kind of takes care of itself. Awesome. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, Google Trends is nice. It shows you how much search volume, or, or you can compare the popularity between two different search terms, which one's being uh, has a higher volume. Thanks a lot, Vince. Thanks a lot, uh, VJ. You've also have your hand up here. Uh, VJ, how you doing today? Yeah, yeah I'm good. Um, we just started the keyword research, um, and we started using a tool called um, SEM Rush. And um, what we did is plugged in the top five competitors for our country. We are here in New Zealand. And um, the cool thing about this tool is it uh, showed us all their organic pages and we're just putting everything into an Excel sheet at the moment. And so it's uh, giving us all the kind of keywords for things that we can use for blog articles, but also um, things that are gonna be listed in the directory. So we're finding this tool really, really helpful um, for things like that. And the other thing that we're going to use it for is do the same thing for other countries like the United States and the UK to look at what the top websites are in those countries, because there might be people in New Zealand that are not using those kind of keywords. 
And so that way we can potentially find keywords that might have high traffic, but not many people are ranking for in New Zealand. So um, yeah, we found the tool really good, and that's um, SEM Rush. Fantastic. Now, are you? Is this? Uh, do they have a free version or is it a paid version? They've got a free version, but it doesn't give you much data. The paid version was, um, I think, it's ninety nine dollars a month. But I've uh, got, a, I've kind of outsourced it uh, on Upwork for somebody who's actually got a paid version, and so they're doing all the research now. Fantastic. Um, well, uh, yeah, great. Thank you for sharing uh, this one, VJ. So yeah, um, you know we don't want to overcomplicate it, overcomplicate it, but there are tools to help you find out what keywords would be the best ones to go after. Um, and it sometimes it's just a matter of changing your terminology of what you're calling things on uh, your website. Um, so yeah, look out for keyword analyzer tools, and there's there's a lot of them that give you some free. Uh, uh, free reports, uh, so give those a try. And then lastly, Vincent talked about domain names a little bit. Um, you know, if you're just starting out, I'd like uh, I'd like to recommend to choose something easy to remember and also relevant. Um, you know, not everyone has a domain name like uh, Flickr or uh, Fandango for for movie tickets. So you can, you can come up with something super creative, but um, it's hard to brand. It's hard to remember something or brand something when it's just a, a made up word. Um, so if you're just starting out, I like to recommend actually putting the keywords into the domain name that you're, uh, you're purchasing. Not only is it good for people who are trying to remember your website, but also it helps uh, with Google a bit uh, while you're starting out. All right, and then what we wanna do now is actually, we have a website example. Um, because there's a lot to do, we're going to go a little quick. There, there'll obviously be a replay, but we're going to apply some SEO keywords to um, a sample website that we have, and we're going to utilize this industry. We're going to target this industry, which is uh, dog grooming in NYC, and Patrick and I will be uh, working right now uh, on the site, but the main areas, especially on your homepage, that you're going to want to cover uh, to improve your homepage SEO in the admin, there is an area in the general settings uh, where you can put some SEO keywords, uh, the area that Rick was in earlier. Then we're going to do some small updates in the header and the main menu of the website. Uh, there are some elements in the design settings that we're going to update where we can inject some good keywords. Uh, then we're going to come down to the footer of the website. There's a footer menu of the website. We're going to add some more SEO keywords in the footer. Uh, and then lastly, we're going to update some of the homepage meta tags. Uh, those are the tags that Google reads behind the scenes in the source code of your website. Nothing complicated, but I'll show you where you can edit that. And then lastly, a very important step, we're going to submit our sitemap uh, to Google as well. So um, a lot to cover, but we want to make sure we get it uh, all covered here. So we're going to dive uh, right into it together. Uh, so Pat, um, this is the sample site we're going to be working on. This is basically uh, similar to a site that uh, a new Brilliant Directory site that you would get. Um, it has very generic text all around it. It has uh, local businesses, search our member directory, search for members, review members. So what we're going to do is I think we're going to start with the header um, menu here, and we can go then we can go in and to the main menu as well. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, looking forward to setting up this website, Jason. Perfect. Let's actually take one step back. Let's go to domain names. I'm on GoDaddy. Um, let's let's search for names that I could potentially have purchased for this site. NYC Dog Groomer. That's taken. Maybe we could do Dog Groomers NYC. That's taken. We could do Dog Groomer NYC. Okay. Dog Groomer NYC is available. Um, again, we're going to use the keywords uh, in the domain name in this example. If you have some kind of catchy name that, that you're using for branding, that's perfectly fine as well. Again, I'm an advocate for using uh, uh, the actual keywords in the domain. Dog Groomer NYC, kind of memorable also. Um, so I can go ahead and buy that for $11.99. I'm not going to do it, but let's say I did. Um, so let's do this, Pat. Let's first update the logo here. And to do that one, we're going to go to the design settings. And do you have a slogan we can use for this kind of site, Pat? Oof. Um, Dog Groomer NYC. 
Well, let's do this. Depends. We want the, we want the word best in there. We definitely we want, want NYC in there. Right. Price and something with price. Yeah. Maybe at any price, like so. Find the best. Um, dog dog groomer at the at the right price. We'll do NYC. Uh, dog groomers at the right price. I'll get rid of it. Just do best NYC dog groomers at the right price. We could use words like affordable price, any price, prices, priceless, but um, that's fine. We can save the changes. So let's just do a quick refresh here. Okay. Dog groomer NYC.com, best NYC dog groomers at the right price. All right, let's head on over to the mini nav up here, Pat. Go to toolbox. Again, we're going a little quick just because there's a lot to cover. And uh, hopefully by the end of this, actually, I wanted to do a before and after. I'm going to keep this page over here on the right, and then we'll do an unveiling afterwards. So where I'm at, I'm, I'm at now is in the toolbox in the menu manager, and we want to edit the header mini nav. Now there isn't much going on up here. We just have the phone number, contact us, and member login. Um, but we can put a few other items here. Uh, for example, this link here, local businesses get listed today. Um, we can actually change that to dog groomers get listed today. And I think I'm gonna take one more step back here because I'm going a little too quick for myself. I'm gonna dial it back for one second. We're gonna go back to the general settings. All right, taking one step back. We're going to do the industry name and the profession name. So this will be, these are keywords that will be littered around the site um, and they're gonna be used in meta tags, uh, in the footer, um, and they're just gonna be sprinkled around the site. So we just wanna make sure these two are set for the main industry and type of profession that we're targeting. Um, so I'm gonna say dog grooming NYC is the industry. And the profession will be an NYC dog groomer. So this is like the, the type of business. As an example, there's interior designer. We'll do NYC dog groomer. So dog grooming NYC is the industry. Profession is NYC dog groomer. And we can save the changes. And I, I did get a little ahead of myself. This should have been one of the first things that we did. And if we refresh over up here, Give that a second. All right. Looks like there's a little lag here. So now up here, it automatically changed Pat to NYC dog groomers get listed today. Notice that? Yeah. And also notice the title of my tab here and that's now says NYC dog groomer. And yep. this is the other tab. It used to say local business. So those two keywords actually update a lot of small things around your site, and it just needs to be the main industry that you're covering and the one type of professional. And it, sometimes it might be super broad, like local business, but if you can get a little more specific, like a, a New York City business or something like that, um, it does help a lot. G generally speaking, right, Jason, those are those are probably the two most critical places that you get it right, and ideally you'll have terms that people are searching for. So if people are not searching for local business, it's unlikely that local business is a search term because I'm going to put in my city's name. So if I use that for one of those two variables you just shared, I'm wasting a lot of very powerful Absolutely. SEO. Absolutely. You know, we start you off with local business, just, just something to have a filler there for default, but you should definitely come in there and put something more specific in your general settings for the industry name and the profession name. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to the main menu. So in this case, so actually that took care of our mini nav up here. All I wanted to do was get NYC dog groomer in here. If you wanted to get extra crazy, you can put dog groomer login. <laughs> Mm -hmm. up, up here as well. Why don't Why don't we do it? We're going to go a little overkill on this just to make a point of different places you could potentially uh, put keywords. So in this case, I'm not even going to put NYC. I'm just going to put dog groomer login. All 
that actually push things to the next line. We could keep it like this, which is fine, but just to give you, again, to open the, some ideas for you guys, you could remove the contact us. That's probably something that's better to have in the footer anyways. It's already there. So in this example, I'm going to remove contact us. Perfect. All right, dog groomer login, New York's going to get listed today. So let's go to the mini nav here. And actually, I could, I mean, the main menu, and we can head on over. We could just toggle here in the menu manager. And we can just, again, this is for the directory link. And I'm just going to call it NYC Dog Groomer. So if you click there, it just takes you directly to the directory aspect um, uh, of the site. Uh, for the latest news, that's our blog. I'm just going to put uh, dog grooming tips. Chime in with anything you got, Pat. Yeah, and, and you removed the word directory there, and I think, think it, it might sound basic, but it's important to discuss it. You removed the word directory for new NYC dog groomers. Uh, and the reason why you did that, I believe, Jason, is because you would have done some research and you would have realized that although this is a directory, Nobody searches for dog groomer directory. They search for best dog groomers, dog groomers near me, cheapest dog groomers. The word directory, although it is a directory, it is very rare that people use that keyword in a search. And it's called SEO because it's search engine optimization. So you're making decisions that are based on what people are actually searching for. That's why that research is so important. Because a keyword like directory, unless your industry is, is unique, it's actually not a good keyword for SEO because there are not a lot of people using that term. That's right. Um, if I'm looking for a dog groomer, I'm not going to search dog groomer directory. I'm going to search dog groomer and my city probably. Mm -hmm. I might mm -hmm. say find find Los Angeles dog groomer. But even though we know it's a directory, that's not what people are, are searching for. Correct. Let's just refresh here to save some changes. Again, and this is just to give you guys ideas on all the different places you could potentially put um, keywords. What another thing you could have here is you can create a static page, um, Pat. And let's look at the keyword phrases here. So we have best NYC dog groomers. That's kind of a variation of what we see, best dog groomers in NYC. Um, what you could then do further, let's take it to the next level. I'm going to go to member categories. I'm going to add, so you added top level categories here, right, Pat? Dog walking, dog shampoo. Yeah. So it looks like um, mobile dog grooming is, a, is popular here. So let's add that as a top level category. All right, mobile dog grooming. Now again, you don't need you don't need to belabor the point that it's an NYC. Google is smart enough to realize that the site is eventually going to be about NYC dog grooming, so I don't need to you could, but you don't necessarily need to always have mobile dog grooming NYC um, in there. So I'm just going to add mobile dog grooming here. And here's one more idea for your main menu. Um, so I just added the, uh, the category. Let me refresh this page here. And here's the mobile dog grooming. And we can go to the live page here. So this is the search results page for mobile dog grooming. This is using the Google, Google Search Assist. But what I'm going to do is just take this link here, the live link. I want to add that as a drop down to the main menu here, Pat. Okay. So I'm going to add a new link. Here's the URL. It's going to be called mobile dog grooming. And, 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 to, and yeah. to give you an example, that because I'm sure a lot of people on this webinar are, are, are probably doing this because I see it so frequently, they'll have on their main menu categories or they'll have the word services. And then it'll be a it'll be a link that, that I click on to go see at all the categories. But if you analyze search behavior, nobody Googles services 
that's not a keyword because they they're googling a specific service. So what you're doing is you're saying, okay, my categories are categories that people are searching for. This is really critical that you have categories that are SEO uh, that have good SEO. But then what you're doing in the main menu is you're using the category URL slug and you're making that a, a main menu item. And that main menu item, as, as you know, has a lot of SEO weight for the homepage. And also it's gonna generate a lot of traffic because your website visitors, those are the pages are gonna visit and Google knows that. And the more traffic you get, the more times they click on those links, the more relevancy they have. So being very specific with a category name is, is actually a great approach here. Absolutely. And you don't have to go crazy with the categories. Just stick to the top 10 categories, top five categories, and just kill it in those categories. Don't worry about having 100 or 1,000 categories. Um, I mean, you could, but again, if you're starting out, why not be strong in just a few things rather than be weak in many things? It's going to be really hard to get thousands of members to fill all those categories. It's going to be really easy to get a bunch of members to fill five or 10 categories. If, if you have 100 categories and you're trying to make them strong, that means means you're officially in the hamster wheel and you're just going to be running around and you're not going to get anything accomplished. So you're absolutely right, Jason. Pick four or five and excel at those. I want to show everyone a fun tip here. We're obviously creating a drop-down menu here. Uh, your Brilliant Directory site is compatible with Font Awesome. Those are those cool icons you see around your site. Um, what I want to do is put a little arrow down here. Uh, so I'm just going to do a quick search here. Uh, this is just a little bonus here. Font Awesome 4.7. Let's just search that. It's going to take us to the uh, site. I'm going to look for icons, and I'm just going to search for a down uh, icon here. I'll use this angle down, and I'm going fast. Again, there'll be a replay. I'm just going to copy the code for this, uh, this icon, this down icon, and I'm just going to paste it right next to here. All right, and save the changes. Cool. Let's refresh the page now. Awesome. We have a little carrot there. So now we have a uh, drop down here. It's got more keywords, mobile dog grooming, dog nail clipping, etc. cetera. Um, so you can, again, decorate your main menu. Don't overcomplicate your main menu. You want the navigation of the user experience to be nice and clean and streamlined. You don't want to overwhelm them with too much, especially when you're first getting started. When your site's more, um, uh, more seasoned, uh, you may want to have more sections that you want to direct people to, but for now, we're just going to keep it simple. All right, Pat, I think we've covered the general settings, the header, and the main menu. Good. We also did the logo up here, which is part of the design settings. I think now we want to go to the design settings and do this section here, and this uh, hero section is what we'll call it. Um, so let's toggle on over to our design settings. And first thing, let's maybe choose a, a different color than the, the standard color that comes with the site. I, I like it. And since it's, since it's designed, I'll, I'll leave this one to you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I, I'll just choose something uh, simple here. All right. Let's choose. Let's do something that'll be uh, different than. Uh, let's use this uh, Yelpy red here. Perfect. All right. So we got the Yelpy red. Now what we want to do is we want to head on over to the homepage layout. And right now the homepage layout says search our online member directory, and it has this photo here. Um, let's actually change that up. This is a really cool tab, homepage search settings, lots of stuff here. Uh, let's change this image first. Let's replace the image. I've already pre-selected an image that I want uploaded, and it's this adorable dog right here. And Let's update the main title, search our online member directory. So let's turn to some of our... And, and just as a bonus tip, Jason, because you, you did skip that a little quick. Why did you pick that image particularly? Because I know we looked for some image and you like, yes, it's an adorable dog, but there's something about that image that is a good image for the homepage image hero. All right, yeah, the, actually you bring up a good point. The, the number two thing that I kind of always see a problem with some of these sites is, is the homepage image. A couple tips for you guys, three tips. One, don't choose an image that has a lot of white background. Don't want white background. This has a little bit here, but it's more of a gradient, a blue gradient. Number two, 
Try not to choose an image where you're going to be covering people's faces. You want the subject of your image to be on the left or right, and then having this blank blurry space or something that's not covering the smiley faces is going to allow you to have text like this, search our online member directory. You don't want to block people's teeth and smiles and, and, and faces. And then lastly, um, use an appropriate sized image. We recommend um, generally, you're going to want a rectangle, not a square, because most screens are rectangles. I have never seen a square laptop before. Um, so you're going to want a rectangle size, and we recommend 1800 by 600 pixels, depending on the the height of your hero section, this is the hero section, uh, it might vary, but this is a good uh, rule of thumb here, 1800 by 600 pixels. So you wanna look for a large and high quality image. And then last, last, lastly, uh, don't use an image that's too big. Um, images take the longest to load on web pages. So if you have like a 6,000 pixel image that's five megabytes, that's going to load horribly on mobile devices and, and still take a long time on desktops. So you want light images that are approximately the exact size that, that's going to look good on the majority of screens and monitors. And then lastly, the important reason why the dog is on the right or left is on mobile devices, um, we're going to show you that the dog's face is not going to be covered on mobile devices. Let me go ahead and actually save this real quick because, Pat, you brought up good good uh, topic here about the home page image. I just want to show what happens on mobile. And it's done on purpose deliberately. Let's refresh. We're going to get all sorts of color changes now. Hey now. Okay. So the dog is on the right. We're not covering its face. The text is on the left. You know, we're not really covering anything here. Um, so this is good. So when we go into mobile view, it's it's smart enough to know to keep the dog out of the picture here and it's showing it's going to keep the part of the image that has the the blue background so that's going to contrast nicely with um with our text here and if you guys don't believe me let's do this let's float the uh the text to the right basically over the dog's face and let's save the changes and Let's refresh the mobile view. So in this case, it's not doing it exactly, but if this was a smiley face, it, it really distracts you from the, the search text here. It's much nicer to have the, the search text behind the same background that it is on a desktop. And um, let's get out of this view here. Yeah, I think you proved your point there it's, point. it's a half cut off it's a half cut off image i don't even know what it is i'm not focused on the words anymore right it's hard to um, read the words yeah exactly all right i'm not gonna okay so lesson for everyone there all right main title text we're gonna want this to include some of these phrases that we quickly found in google um so best so let's find the let me refresh this page real quick a little glitch here. Okay. Homepage layout. All right. Find the best dog groomers in NYC at any price. We can even just do, let's just say we're, we're for finding affordable dog groomers. Find the best dog groomers at affordable prices. That's what our directory is for at affordable parts. Then we have the subtext. So we have the main text up here, and then we have subtext here. Start searching members here. We could say search NYC dog groomers below. Now go ahead and save the changes. And let's refresh the page. There we go. Now you could play with the font family and the font sizes and, and all that stuff. We'll leave that out for this purpose because we're more focused on uh, the keywords here. But you can even get rid of the word find here. If it just said the best dog groomers in, N in NYC, that would even be we, more. We did, we, we did have a quick question. Let's not spend time on it, but they asked how can they change the fonts in that H1 to find the best dog groomers? Where would you do that if you wanted to control that font for finding? 
Absolutely. For the best, uh, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, so just under the titles, you got colors. So main title color. In this case, we're going to use white. And then you have the font size. So you can go from all from 30 pixels all the way up to 80 pixels. Um, in this case, I'm going to make it a little smaller. So we just have the title on two lines. So probably uh, 55, 54, I'm going to guess. And then you can also change the, the font family. So these are all Google fonts. You can uh, search, you can Google Google fonts, and you can see there's hundreds of fonts here for you to choose from. Um, let's just choose a random one. I have no idea what it's going to look like. It's called New Rocker. <laughs> and let's save the changes. I feel good about it. All right, my fingers are crossed. <laughs> refresh the page. Okay. So very hard to read. So <laughs> um it's good more, for a tattoo website, perhaps. Yeah, it looks like Black Sabbath, you know, like they're yeah like or something. Yeah. All right. So the best dog groomers, I'm just gonna choose a regular font. We can go back to just so it's easy to read in our example here. Um there's a font here, Droid Serif. Now let's take it to the next level. I'm going to change this. We're using the keyword and location search, uh, which is fine. I could type in dog and it'll show me the listings and the, the dog grooming things. But um, probably the people don't, people coming to this website don't know the companies that are listed. They just know the service they're looking for. Um, so what we can do and is. And if it's, and if it's NYC, do you believe the location search? Is something that you would have for the initial search, or would you? What do you recommend? Because it is it is a large area. Would so, you do, would you recommend the zip code or not as a filter initially? You, you may want to do the location search again. It depends. Like Los Angeles is a big area where I'm at, so I would definitely want to put in a, a zip code or a neighborhood. Um, but if you're all if your site is already super specific for the region you're in, you might want to just omit the location. Um, in this example, let's let's keep the location, but I want to change from a keyword search um, to a, a top category dropdown. So I'm going to change the search type. We have a ton of search combinations here that you can use. Obviously, you want to keep things streamlined and easy, keep them easy for the visitor. I'm just going to do top category and location. So let's find that one is right here. And I'm going to save the changes. And then what I'm going to do, Pat, is change these from what do you need. I'm going to inject more keywords uh, into this. Dog grooming services, perhaps? Yeah. So it says, what do you need? Um, yeah, I could say browse dog grooming services or select dog grooming services. So what we have here now, just take it next up. We do have something called show text labels. And anything that's a text label on the site, we, we covered that when Vince was asking about the GDPR. Um, it's in the yellow here, so you don't have to go into any complicated code to change the text around the site. And over here, we get this pop-up, and here's the what do you need. And I'm going to change it to um, select dog grooming service. I could put NYC in there. Again, you could do it as much as you think you need to. Um, I could just do NYC dog grooming services. And Which I prefer. For SEO, if SEO right. is what we're measuring, that's right. a better SEO. NYC Dog Grooming Services, and I know I'm supposed to select the And then search by location, we can even switch that. Let's blow our minds here. Um, search NYC locations. Love it. Right? And let's save the changes. Shout out to Diego and the development department who made this tool. And it's instantly changed, and I'll get rid of the... Uh, Thanks. So, boom. NYC Dog Grooming Services. Select an option. You can even make the select an option. Something. Even, for, but. And and even the search now button could be find 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 the find a dog groomer near me. Fine. Because that near me is a big one. Yep. Let's do it. So this is search now. It's also a text label. Um. So let's scroll down. Here's the search now. Find the best dog groomer near me. All right, find the best. All right, let's take it to the next level. We're gonna go back to Font Awesome. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna search for the for right. 
and we're going to use this right uh, angle right angle here because I want the arrow. I'm going to copy this code here. You guys don't need to worry. This is just uh, bonus stuff that I like to do. And where's our search? Find the best dog groomers near me. And I'm just going to put that right here. And we'll save the changes. And this is getting recorded as well, so everybody can watch the replay if they want to see uh, any step they've missed. You don't have to worry. You'll be able to watch it again. So look. That looks great. Search NY City Dog Groomers below. NY City Dog Grooming Services. We have them here. Dog shampoo, nail clipping. Search NYC locations. You know, I, could, I don't know, Manhattan, whatever it might be. New York, New York. And then find best dog grooming near me and I click that button. But this module now this has tons of keywords in it that we didn't have before. Uh, and this font looks a lot better here. The best dog groomers in NYC at affordable prices. I want to search this directory now. All right, next yeah. section. Next section is the hero divider. Some people choose not to have this on their site. I love this um, because it's like it's a it separates the home page a little bit. Um, it, it draws attention to the hero and it separates it from uh, other sections that's why it's called the hero divider uh, you could put it in different locations but let's update this to have keywords uh, on it I'm just gonna be a little more literal and quick with this one Pat um, search dog groomers Oops. there's something about um, this Firefox here we got to get fixed uh, let me refresh the design settings All right. Here and, and the hero divider, if anybody that thinks the hero divider isn't important, I always recommend that they go on their mobile devices, visit their homepage, and realize how big of an impact that hero divider section has. Um, so it is something I do like to spend time on uh, and make sure that it is optimized and that you're, you're, you're making sure that you have buttons and call to actions and that there's something to do and it's not just an informative um, section that doesn't have anything to click on. So it, it is a really, really good tool. So I'm going to do search dog groomers, dog groomer services, and list your services. What so about list your grooming services? I want to do it. I think it's going to take up um, two, two lines. All right, skip it then. Too much because I can put it here. Um, Because I could put a description, right? Add your dog grooming services. I could put NYC here. Um, dog grooming services. Um, search NYC dog grooming services. And then I guess, you know, we can you come up with whatever you want. Um, so there, there could be, I would probably put like uh, dog shampoo, nail nail clipping. I would put in, in that in that search dog groomers or that one there, exactly, either or. And you're getting some more keywords in there. All right, mobile okay. washes because mobile is one of the word. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Search dog groomers, you know, could, you know, whatever, whatever it is, we could just do NYC. Uh, it could, no, that's fine. So, so find and compare dog groomers near you. All right. Uh, you can obviously choose this. So here we have some of the font awesome icons pre-selected for you. I think there is one for paw. Yep. There we go. Um, and then for services, or just do a list because it's like a list view. And then, uh, yeah, list your list your services. That's fine. Um, That's good. What's also nice is right now we just have the icon, the title text, and the and the, the caption text. You can also have links here. So let's add some links. Link text. Um, we can say just say search dog groomers and we'll link that and this one will say um, doesn't have sometimes you don't need all the SEO in there we'll just keep it browse Correct. services search groomers which go thing there and then uh, join our site and this will go to forward slash join this will go to forward slash categories which is a list of categories and this will go just to the search results page 
Okay, great. Let's save the changes. I'm actually going to change the colors also, sorry. Let's go with this one. And let's do a before and after on this, and I'll open this in a new tab. All right, we changed the colors here. So um, we see here, you know, New York City dog groomers, search groomers, uh, dog groomer services. This will take us to the services that's automatically created on the site, and then list your services, add your NYC dog grooming services. So great place to add more uh, good SEO content here. Um, just and for and, and for sites, Jason, that have not, not a lot of categories, and this could be one of those. I see a lot of people, and it's a great SEO strategy. They choose their top three categories, and they use the hero provider to just drive traffic there and take it to the search result layout. You're a genius, Pat. Uh, yeah, you could just do shampooing services, mobile services, clipping services, or whatever it is. Um, exactly, and, and, the, and leave... the buttons take you to the search results, and for SEO purposes, that is huge, because uh, you're going to be driving a lot of traffic to those primary categories. So if you have three or four categories that are very impactful for your industry and what most people search for, I actually love that strategy in utilizing that for the hero divider section. I, uh, that's a, that's a fantastic idea. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be to like some more general pages. It could be to specific categories. Um, just anything that's going to help the user experience click into your website rather than leave your website. So that's a great strategy. And I was going to just say from a design aesthetic, just try to make sure that uh, the rows are balanced. So this, these obviously have text going on two lines. Uh, perhaps you want to shorten it or make this one go on two lines as well. Um, actually, I think two lines would be great. You just add a little bit more to each one of these, and it would look really, really nice as far as the presentation. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's continue moving down. Uh, by default, uh, you do start with these two boxes here. You could remove them if you want. Um, I like to keep them because we're looking for places where we can add um, SEO content. So um, let's go back to our design settings here. And I'll show you where you guys can edit these two boxes here. We're going to go to homepage layout. And right down here, the last one under homepage layout, the about website and join offer. So this is the are you a local business? Are you a local business? Let's just update this. Are you a um, NYC dog groomer? And then we could say list your NYC dog grooming services to connect with more customers. That's fine, right? Yep. Server, so we could just say, list your NYC dog grooming company to connect with more customers. Um, and this says, join our site today. Say, join our dog grooming network. Or what's a better word, dog grooming community? <laughs> Whatever it might be. Yeah. But you can have the word dog or or list your dog grooming services as well. It, either or, there are, there's a lot of approaches. All right, and then this is the about the website where you can have more of a, a paragraph style here. There's like three lines of text here. Um, so we can say, um, let's put the word the best dog NYC. grooming in NYC. It doesn't have to say about and your website name. Use the best dog grooming. And then finding, we just basically replace local businesses here. NYC dog groomers is easy with the website name. Um, search our website to instant connect with the best dog grooming in NYC. Right, just using the same words that are here. Yeah, I, I, and I might find a way to get price in there. One of those two paragraphs needs to be able to to get price in there, but yeah, affordable price. And and that's why, Jason, it was so good that you did that at the beginning. That was the, why it was the first step that you took is, is you wanted to identify what words we needed to have in our minds when we're writing all of this content. Right. Search our dog grooming. I'll use the word directory here. to instant connect with the best dog groomers in NYC. All right, let's just leave it at that. And then okay, you can change what the link says there as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and save those changes, Pat. Okay, so 
refresh. Uh, are you NNYC? I think I need an are you with a question mark perhaps or is that already in there the question mark? I think we need a, a question mark there. Okay. Save the changes. Great. Oops. Still saving. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Are you an NYC? I don't know what the grammar is on that. But anyways. We got the word gotcha. dog groomer in there. Um, and here's the best dog grooming in NYC. This could say find the best dog groomers in NYC. It's more variation. Um, okay. Before we get to the footer, we have some pre-made content that we want to add to the homepage. Um, Pat was nice enough to go to the member category section. And he added a few... Uh, top level categories here. Um, do we need to assign images to these categories, Pat? Yeah, I had done that. I wonder what, hmm. we may need to redo that perhaps. Well, let's add, so let's add some images to uh, some of these categories. And we're gonna show our top categories on uh, the homepage. So uh, dog grooming, you got a funny picture here. Uh, nail clipping, I saw a nail clipping picture here. And yeah. Uh, dog shampoo. Well, maybe that one not have been the dog shampoo. Dog walking. <laughs> That's great. And mobile dog grooming. I guess we can use. Look. That's a that's a new one you just added. But which yeah. could add repeat it. Gotcha. Yeah. Now you can you can sort on the home page. You can show categories on the home page. They can go alphabetically, or you can have a certain sort. Order. So um, the most popular one for me is uh, dog grooming. And um, I'm actually going to make this nine. I'm going to go backwards. So I'm going to sort them from nine, eight, seven, six. So to make this one nine. Uh, the next one is uh, dog walking, let's say, is eight. Uh, mobile dog grooming, we'll do a seven. And then the fourth one we're going to show is the clipping. So let me save this. Would, would yeah. nine show up after eight? Meaning eight would have priority in the order. So by default, every oh, they start with zero. So if I had lots of categories, they would all be zero by default. So I'm going to choose to to sort them from the highest number to the lowest number. So it'll go nine, eight, seven, six backwards, okay. and I'll show you that right now. So let's go back to the design settings, and what we want to do is I love this picture. Uh, we want to show a little bit more than just these two modules here. We're going to go to homepage layout home page section order and these are all the different sections you can kind of stream uh, all the way down your home page there's 15 different options I recommend sticking with three or four you don't want to overwhelm your home page with too much content uh, so we're going to keep the hero divider right there that's the first thing that comes after the, the hero search module and for number two um, let's do the the top category so we're going to scroll down and we're going to show top categories second to bottom here right now and then Number three, and I'll just fast forward to what we did. You had newest members, right, Pat? The business members, show recent members. That's correct. Recent members, uh, blog articles, and top categories, I believe. Gotcha. And then lastly, let's do the blog articles with sidebar. I like that one. Yep. And then we'll go back and show the about website join offer right before the footer starts. So one, two, three, four. So these are five elements here. And let's save the changes. And we'll refresh the page. Okay, great. <clears throat> so um, we haven't configured this yet, but so it's showing all our top level categories. We're gonna do that in a second. We're gonna update the title here, but now we have our categories. We have some newest members. Pat just added some sample members in here. Some funny pictures of these pets. Thank you for that. And then we have latest, yeah. latest news. And these are the blog articles with a sidebar. You can have more. Uh, stuff in the sidebar there and then we have over here are you an NYC dog or these two modules so again let's go a little bit quick because uh, we're covering a lot of topics here let's let's uh, modify the titles of these sections here so we're gonna head on back over to the design settings homepage layout I'm gonna close the homepage section order here's the coolest part 
under the home page section order, you have the options for your different section orders. I'm going to click options, and then I'm going to check this box, only show active sections. Otherwise, it's going to show all the different options that you can configure. These are the only, these three are the only active ones here that I have options for. Let's start with the top level categories. So instead of search popular categories, we'll say NYC dog dog getting a thing here, uh, dog grooming, and I'm going to sort, see I can sort A to Z, Z to A, but I'm going to uh, order descending, which means from the highest to the lowest, and I'm going to limit it to four categories, so it's only the ones that I set as 9876. Let's go ahead and save that. So you're saying if I had 30 top level categories, but I don't want them all on my homepage because we're getting SEO. What are the most popular search terms? I want to highlight the top four. I would. That's why I would limit it to four. And with the sort order, you are able to, to to hand pick what those four categories would be. Exactly. It gives the website owner a little bit of control um, because again, everything is by default. The sort order is zero, and zero would be the first option. So by giving them, by assigning some um, some numbers, and so, it gives me the ability to control the higher hierarchy of how they show. Um, and look here, we got now we got these keywords here: dog grooming, dog walking, mobile dog grooming, dog nail clipping. Um, and then we have the newest members here. And what do you think I'm going to do there, Pat? We'll just update that. Real I would quick. say, yeah, I would say latest NYC dog groomers, perhaps near you, near me, because you know they're in in New York and. That, that's the big difference, right? And when I'm writing, and I made a mistake right there, if I say best New York City dog groomers near you, if you look at the search terms, no one's searching for best dog groomers near you. Everybody's searching for best dog groomers near me. So in that case, the near me would be more powerful. And I'm reading the website. It makes sense that they would interpret it as near themselves. So near me has more SEO value than near you. All right. And for the blog title, I'm going to do NYC Dog Grooming Tips. Fun one there. And let's save it. Honestly, adjusting the colors and some of the font sizes and stuff, it, it already looks like a legitimate website. <laughs> right. Uh, right. <laughs> looks great. Honestly, I, I love BD. I'm just going to say it. All right. Let's refresh the page here. Best NYC Dog Groomers Near Me. Uh, NYC dog grooming tips and then I'm not going to do it but uh, where it says are you a business register your company you can utilize the same thing we did with showing the text labels each one of these items is a text label uh, even join our newsletters a text label you could say subscribe to get dog grooming tips in NYC whatever you want to, to kind of add more SEO content here um, so also now we have our blog articles on the home page so Pat just quickly you know created these these articles here um, and these at good SEO here another thing Google really loves is to see fresh content on your home page so if you are utilizing some of the the streaming widgets that show recent content that's been added to your site uh, that's fantastic it adds good keywords uh, and it shows that your shows Google that your site is uh, maintaining itself with fresh content and has a nice pulse so that's another factor mm -hmm. Uh, that Google looks at when it's considering where it's going to rank you in their search results is um, how frequently your site is publishing fresh content. Um, let's go on down to the footer here and actually let's take a step back. Uh, there is one more secret where you can add content on your home page beyond the streaming um, options and that is this option here, home page section order you have an ace in your back pocket if you want to add even more content. I'm going to go to section six here, and we're going to choose custom homepage content. And that's going to show as empty right now, but I'm going to show you where you can add that and what that does exactly. And keep in mind, you could add that at in, in between any of the sections. In this case, we're going to put it at the end. And what I'm going to do, Pat, is... I'm just going to get a piece of content here um, about dog grooming. I just want a body of text, basically. All right, let's just take it from Wikipedia as an example here. All right, I'm just going to take this body of text here, 
And let's say I wanted to just add, a, if you if you have an SEO company or someone that wants to add content on your homepage for you, uh, what you can do is um, go ahead and edit your homepage, the, the actual homepage itself. And let me show you where you can find that. Go to content, edit web pages, and it's always the first option at the top here, homepage. Uh, so I'm going to edit the homepage. And remember, you can do widget equals here if you're familiar with widget short code. You can do lots of awesome, awesome things here. I'm just going to paste this content from Wikipedia that I had, and I'll go ahead and save the changes. Remember, this is just a sample website. And if you recall, section six is the custom homepage content. I'll go ahead and save that. Um, and I'll go ahead and refresh the page now. Okay. Let's give that a second. So now if I scroll down, we have all our elements here. We have the NYC Pet Grooming Tips. We have here, and now we see this body of text here. And it's basically my place as the website owner. If I'm not going to be using any of the preset streaming widgets and the streaming widget options, I can place custom uh, images, text, YouTube videos, whatever it might be, um, into the the homepage content here. I'm editing the forward slash home web page, and you can essentially put anything extra uh, you want here. And also, it doesn't have to come at the end here. You could slip it in between any of these elements if you wanted to. Yeah, it's, it's a great tool. Probably the two most common use cases I see for custom homepage content. One is they call the widget that calls all of the categories. So you're talking about SEO. If you want to rank for all the categories and services, um, you can have you can call that widget right there in that, that section, and everything will be clickable. And the other the other use case that I see that's quite quite common is just a fully customized homepage and that's how you go about doing that is you would only call the custom homepage content so with brilliant directories yes you have these amazing this, these amazing sections that you can utilize that don't require any css they don't require any html uh, we haven't done any coding on this call i just uh, oh, I, I, I did just do widget equals but that's oh. that's short code um okay, okay. Uh, but i haven't done any coding yet but th this is not really coding it's just a, a standard thing but if you wanted to put the categories on your home page the mm -hmm. ones that are on this page um you could this probably isn't the best example but now it's there so you have a list of yep. your top level categories here again this isn't the best case but i just want to show how you can put a widget here in addition it's as easy as plan. that exactly it's, it's super powerful to to know that you can really control what goes on your home page have that custom module and uh, if you're looking for seo if you don't have too many categories putting the quick link uh right there on the home page that's what's going to drive the most amount of traffic and it's a great way to educate potential members as to the types of uh, services that they could be promoting on your website as well as for consumers or visitors for them to grasp what type of content it is they can expect to find and, and, and what kind of members would be listing on your directory. So it's a great educational uh, tip there. I want to show everyone something really fun that, that, uh, that happened um, in a previous webinar is instead of the text here, we did put a YouTube video, and I thought that was absolutely genius. I think it was Yolanda from uh, muchogusto.biz or .com, I forget exactly. Yeah, it let, was, me, it was. let me just quickly share everyone, if you wanted to put a YouTube video without doing complicated coding, um, how you could do that. So let's, let's say this is the video uh, we want. I'm clicking the share button here. Uh, we want the embed code, and I'm just gonna copy YouTube's embed code here. And let's go back to our design settings, homepage layout. So I'm just copying the regular YouTube embed code. And I'm going to go down to the about website and join offer. And instead of this body of text here, I'm just going to put the YouTube code and I'll delete this link. I'll keep the title in there and I'll save the changes. Let's see what it looks like, Pat. I'm not sure. Okay. And if we refresh the page... Boom! You probably oh that it auto fits it. So now we have a view. Wow. We have a video here um, on the page. We I guess we could do the same thing with this text if we want to have two videos, or we can add more text here to match the height of the video. So we could have a couple paragraphs on this one. But um, again, this is a that's a great way to kind of add some more interactive media on your home page without any custom, uh, very complicated coding. I, I much prefer that 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 
that approach, having the video on the right and on the left, because the reality is by default, there's there two call to actions to join. I think one is enough. Just spend a little bit more time in the paragraph, like you said, get more great SEO content in there. And that video on the right, that's just phenomenal. I'd probably recommend making that a video for the end users for them to learn how to search your site and what problems you're solving for them. What problems you're solving and how to use your site. So mm -hmm. this is uh, this is it with some more text. Obviously, you can make this into two paragraphs. Again, we're just trying to stimulate some ideas with you guys on how you could add places you could add more content or make your, your homepage maybe a little more engaging. Um, in case you haven't thought of it. So uh, we, we did overkill with showing these categories here. We have SEO text here uh, about dog grooming. Uh, let's go down to the footer area here. Uh, this join newsletter is also a text label, so I'm not gonna go ahead and change that. Um, but this footer area, um, you can obviously add more, um, uh, more SEO text. So here's, remember the NYC dog groomers. It says finding NYC dog groomers. I didn't type that in there. That's based on what we entered in the general settings um, of the site. So um, it's it's a variable that's used here. You can come in and edit it, but let me show you how you can modify some of your footer menu links. It's very similar to how we did the main menu. Uh, so first of all, Pat, high five to the design settings. Look what it let us do just by pointing and clicking and, and putting text in certain places. Uh, basically de decorated amazing. the whole site here uh, with this stuff. All right, so let's go to the toolbox and we'll go to menu manager. And we'll go to the footer menu. So here's the footer menu. Now, when there's a green um, square here, it basically means that there's kind of like sublinks underneath it. That's how we did our drop-down menu. And this is the about. So let's 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 get uh, calibrated to see what we're looking at here. Mm -hmm. So here's the well, about website search and support, and then everything underneath them are kind of like children uh, child links um, there. So here's the about, and if we toggle this open, and let me just stretch this out, this is basically that little snippet that we're seeing. Um, and again, we don't have to have about here. Um, affordable NYC uh, dog grooming. You could just put keywords around your site. Uh, it doesn't have to be like an official title. And then you can obviously update this. Uh, maybe you want it to be two or three lines long, maybe four lines, just something that, that will look aesthetically pleasing with the design of your site, uh, but also includes all the important keywords that you need. Uh, in this case, I'll just go ahead and duplicate this. We'll go a little bit longer um, and we'll save the changes. And we'll refresh. And now it says affordable NYC dog grooming. So now we got an awesome keyword phrase right there um, with a nice block of text. Um, and then we have our links here. It says website, but instead of website, we could do um, dog grooming services. And as Pat mentioned before, maybe we want to link three or four of our, our top categories yes. right under yes. there. So I'm just going to do, um, I don't know, mobile dog grooming. And we'll change this one to uh, nail clipping, right? I won't change the links for now. This is just for as an example to show up with the keywords here. And we'll refresh the page. Um, and if, if I had if I had a lawyer directory, just to, to give some other examples, different industries, uh, for dog grooming, it would be lawyer services. I would want to pick my three or four most searched terms. That's why those tools <laughs> at the earlier part of this webinar are so important. Perhaps it's divorce, divorce law. Perhaps it is um, corporate law. It could be many different types of laws. So you want to, but you don't want to make the, you don't want to guess what you think is the most valuable category. What you want to do is you want to get some data. You want to use those tools and you want to see the search volume and you'll see what your competitors are doing and say, okay, to launch, just like the hamster wheel, right? You can't do it all at the same time. Pick one, two or three categories and do a great job at those ones. And you'd ideally pick the ones that are getting the mo most volume out of the gate. So you can start ranking for those and getting some traffic. Right. Pick your battles. As as entrepreneurs and website owners, we all have limited resources. So instead of going after everything, focus your energy and just do a few things well. That's probably the best advice that we could share with you. Um, I'm just I'm just creating some mock information here. All right, we could leave it at that. And I'll show you guys one more thing uh, that you could do. 
So Pat, look what I did here. We have affordable NYC dog grooming with a body of text. Um, instead of website and thing, I, I, uh, whatever it was here before, I put grooming services. We could list our services. Dog groomers, we could put some links that are for the dog groomers, like how it works, list your services, um, you know, something like that. And then you can keep support. Maybe you want to ditch the support and just put, you know, more, more dog grooming related things here. Maybe a link to your dog grooming blog uh, and things like that. Um, one more place that you guys can can put text uh, would be, I believe, underneath, let's see here. Yeah, I think you can create a new link. Now, what's cool about the menu is not everything needs to be a link. You see how we're, we're just using these as titles and we're not putting a URL? That's what's really cool about the menu builder is you could just have title text. It doesn't all have to be linked text. Um, we can also put another body of text here underneath uh, I'm just copying that underneath the get listed today button. Let's save the changes. Not sure what it's going to look like, but let's take a look. Okay, that didn't turn out well. Let me do one thing that's going to help it. This here, this empty one, it's actually a, like a, a an invisible line. So we need an invisible line under the, the get listed today. Again, this is a little more technical what I'm doing, but let me clone the invisible line here, the clear fix. And I'm going to place it right before uh, the get listed today button here. This one, this one here is the get listed today button. So let's save the changes. I now have this invisible line and it should make this text look good. And is it not? If it's not, I'm just going to move on. That's okay. It's not working perfectly right now. It was just a bonus area where you can put more text underneath everything uh, in the menu here. Uh, we'll scratch that one. Let me delete that. All right, Pat, let's take a deep breath for a second. Okay. Let's let's look at where we were at before. Everything was super generic about website search, local business. And what we've done is not only giving it some color, we have dog groomer login, NYC dog groomers. We've really done overkill on this one, but I, I think it's, we're just trying to, to show examples here. The search box, I love what we did with here. Search NYC dog groomers below, NYC dog grooming services, um, the hero divider, uh, categories, members, blogs. Um, we can even change the text labels of these and, and make them related to dog groomers. Um, we've added specialized content. We've kind of repurposed what these two boxes are for altogether, which is amazing. We've shown a custom widget um, on the home page. We've added custom text on the home page, and we've modified uh, the footer here. Let's take a, a breath and backtrack. Let's look at our slide here. I think we've done one, two, three, and four. We're going to get into five, the homepage meta tags and the submitting the site map uh, to Google. Uh, um, homepage meta tags. All right. So the homepage meta tags are kind of what Google reads. It's, it's basically what, uh, let me do a search here for dog groomer. It's basically the, the title here that Google is going to read and also the description. And you want, not only does it help with your search engine optimization, uh, you also want it to be something nice that people are going to click on, uh, not just making it for robots. Um, so let me show you where you can edit your home page. These are called meta tags. Uh, so what we want to do is we can go to content, edit web page, and we're going to edit our home page again. And over here on the right-hand side, we have a nice and tidy, it says SEO meta tags. And a lot of these are using variables because when we launch the sites, they're, they're meant to be used with all these sites. I'm going to go ahead and just scrap everything here. And I'm going to just say best NYC dog groomers. And I'm going to even put search free uh, for... NYC dog groomers. Now this isn't going to show on 
my public website, it's what Google's gonna choose to show in uh, the search results, in Google search results. So I like best NYC dog groomers, search free, search free for NYC dog groomers at affordable prices. So I want the word prices in there, right, Pat? Um, keywords, so this would be, I think four to six keywords are fine. You don't need to go overkill. You can do NYC dog groomer. Um, you know, we can just take some of these phrases here. Affordable dog groomer NYC. They could be phrases. They're not just uh, keywords, a single keywords. Um, all right, that's fine. And then the description is, you know, it's, it's actually text. So the, the, it would be here, reviews on dog groomers in Los Angeles, whatever it might be. We want to put something that's easy to read but also has good keywords in it. So we could say find the best NYC dog groomers at the best prices for dog groomers in NYC. I, I call that a, a front to back sentence. You're kind yeah. of saying the yeah. same thing at the end, but you're injecting keyword variation into there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save those changes. Okay. Um, awesome. Take it a step further. You can also update how, what the title and description and image is going to be on Facebook. Um, so you, I don't want to get into that, but you can basically do the same thing. So when someone shares your homepage on Facebook, it'll use this title and this description and this image here. Uh, so let's save the changes and view the page. And we're not going to see that, but it is in the code. I'm going to look at the source code here. Um, what we're looking for is the title. So this is the title that Google will use in the search results. And we want a title that people will click on, but also has my keywords in there. Um, you'll notice I don't have a lot of words like for, is, the. You want to keep it short and sweet. Uh, so we have best NYC dog groomers. Search free. I do have the word for there, but it's limited. Search free for NYC dog groomers at affordable prices. And then the next two lines are these two. I'll keep them highlighted. Uh, this was my description. Find the best NYC dog groomers at the best prices for dog groomers in NYC. And the keywords, NYC dog groomer, formal, et cetera, et cetera. So you really want to make sure that you have good phrases and a nice title that people will click on. The generic one that comes with your BD site is fine. It'll do the job. But after you've done a little keyword research, you're going to really find that you can use more effective keywords and phrases for your title and your description and keywords. Um, okay. And the last thing is submitting your sitemap to Google. And it's super simple. Uh, so in order to submit your sitemap in Google, you do need the uh, Google sitemap generator add-on. It's it's uh, very important to have for your site. I think I think you should definitely get it if you care about traffic from Google. Once you have that on your site, uh, you can click on sitemap generator here in the toolbox. And it's going to generate the sitemap in about uh, 30 to 60 seconds. And while that's generating the sitemap, where you want to go is here to Google, uh, Google Webmasters. If you don't have an account, you can set one up. It's free. I'm going to show you how you can add your sitemap to Google. And what a sitemap does is it helps Google find your website's pages a lot faster. Otherwise, you have to wait for Google to visit your site, crawl all your pages, browse your pages automatically. This way, you're basically giving Google a present. And what's inside the present are all the pages that are um, part of your website. So Google is going to be able to index those pages and include them in Google search results a whole lot faster. So I highly recommend making sure that you submit a sitemap to Google. Um, so once you come to the Google Webmaster Tools, you can sign in. Uh, you're going to want to go to your search console. You can also Google you know, how to add a sitemap and whatnot. Um, they have a new interface. What you want to do is if it's your first site, they'll probably prompt you. We have a lot of properties, so I'm going to add a new property. And let me get the link for that. And you're also going to want to do this after you connect your live domain name. I wouldn't do it with the directory up domain name because once you switch, it's going to make this obsolete. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this domain name. It's going to verify that it's a real website. And now I need to, I need to verify that I'm the owner of this website. And the quickest way to do this with Google isn't actually with the HTML file. I'm going to toggle this closed. We want to add the HTML tag to our homepage. 
So I'm just going to toggle this open, and it's going to ask me to copy this code. I'm going to do Control C on my keyboard, and actually, right here on my home page, um, I can scroll down, and the last box here, custom page level head tags, just paste Google's code right there. So I'm, I'm, this is the home page I'm editing, and I'm going to paste that in the last box here, and I'm going to save the changes. And I'm going to click verify now that I've added it to my home page. It's going to check verification. Ownership verified. Let's go to the property. Okay. Now, besides all the fancy things that this can do, all we really want to do is submit our sitemap to Google. That's the main objective we want to do here. So that's why it's one of the top sidebar links here is sitemaps. I'm going to click on sitemaps. It's asking me add a new sitemap. So it's asking what's the sitemap URL. Well, the good news is in this tab here, I just created the sitemap with the sitemap generator tool. And I basically need everything after my website's domain name. So I think I could just copy the whole thing, copy to clipboard. And if I paste it in here, Google is smart enough to uh, get rid of this part here. Sitemap submitted successfully, got it. And let's see, it says couldn't fetch. Sitemap index process successfully. Okay, I guess it's in the process of doing it. I'm not sure what's going on there. It probably takes a minute, but I've submitted my sitemap to Google. It'll find all the pages that are part of my website, and I can pat myself on the back now because I'm at least telling Google that my website exists, and it's going to start indexing all the different pages of my website. We're pretty much done here with the sitemap, submitting your sitemap to Google. And that would cover steps one through six, Pat. Wow. I mean, it was a bit of a long longer webinar than most, but I, I've been reading people's comments on this webinar and it does seem like it was uh, what a lot of people are hoping we would cover. It's been a very in-depth and A to Z from everything you need to know about optimizing your web, your homepage for SEO. Fantastic. Um, if anyone has one or two questions, we could take them. I do. I just checked the time, Pat. You're right. Basically, we were doing a lot of explaining here, and I hope uh, I hope we weren't talking in circles and it was high value for you guys. Um, but let's see if anyone has any questions here. Okay, we got one question from Dan. Dan, how are you doing today? Not too bad. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. How'd you like the presentation today? Oh, that's good. I came in a little bit late, but uh, got the I've, been work with Pat, I've been working with Patrick on my SEO stuff here for some time. Um, the question I have is on the home page. Um, uh, do we do this for every page on, on the on the site, like so, uh, adding the uh, meta tags? So that's a great question. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it on every page. Um, generally, the header and the footer um, should be optimized. Um, but let me show you what you can do. Uh, let's search for dog nail clipping. So see how this is already putting the, the title here, dog nail clipping results? So, right. Dynamically, your Brilliant Directory's website will add a lot of the important SEO elements, uh, whether you're doing a category search or a location search and even the, the member profiles. Um, so you can enhance these pages, but I would say your homepage is the, is the best place to start. All right. That's all I need to know. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. All right, guys. Um, let's see here. Yeah, no one else. I think we covered a lot, Pat. I'm I'm a little exhausted. I'm sure you are as well. But um, super high value here. Um, make sure you guys add the important SEO keywords to your site if you want to get um, higher in the Google rankings. Uh, so we'll leave it at that. We'll have a replay of this. You guys can watch this in slow motion. Uh, so thank you, Rick, for your segment on Rick's Corner. Really valuable information there on the configuration tab. And don't get stuck in the hamster wheel. Remember, you want to just do work on your project continuously, uh, focus on designing your site, focus on marketing, driving traffic, finding more problems you can solve, and cycle through these steps continuously. Um, and also, Jason, I, I did post right now a link to our Facebook group. Um, any any positive feedback or, or any ideas that you have to bring to the table, we'd, we'd love to hear again. The comments have been great here in today's chat in particular. Fantastic. Um, great. Yeah. And, and here's the link, brilliantdirectories.com forward slash Facebook, if, uh, if you didn't catch Pat's link there in the chat. Uh, but this concludes this webinar. We'll probably have a webinar in two weeks from now, mid-December. We'll keep you posted with the final uh, date.
But on behalf of myself, Rick, and Patrick, thank you guys so much for joining this awesome webinar, and we look forward to catching you in the next one. Have a great week.